Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Project Closure and Transition. This is Lecture A. A key part of effective project management is to skillfully manage the end of the project, closing it out and transitioning the organization to the new systems and products that you generated in your project. This unit discusses techniques for effective management of project closure and transition to operations. The objectives for project closure and transition are to bring project activities to a close, conclude the customer acceptance process, document and archive lessons learned, update and close out all the project documents, and manage the transition to operations. All of these activities are important to the successful completion of your health IT project. This lecture will focus on the first two objectives. So the end of the project is near. You are in the home stretch. The project is nearing completion. And after so much hard work, you really want to end this project on a high note. So it is tempting to be so eager to finish that your attention may slip. You know it is important to not let that happen. Remember the recency effect. People's opinions may be shaped by the most recent experiences. You don't want all your exemplary work during the project to be clouded by sloppy work at the end. This is the time really to bear down and apply extra effort to bring the project home successfully. This subject is so important that closing processes is one of the five process groups in the project management body of knowledge. So keep in mind, when your project is discussed in the future, you want it to be remembered as a success. Closure and transition is just as important as any other part of the project, but usually it is the least planned, and not planning the closure and transition to operational use is a major mistake. Just as much thought is needed to be put into the closure and transition activities as any of the other process groups. Let's look at the first steps involved in project closing. To get started, remember you have references to help you. You will want to refer to the Project Charter and Project Scope Statement and revisit the Project Management Plan, PMP. Clarify how the products from your project were planned to be transitioned to operational use, what was in the plans as far as how to transition them. To what extent is the transition part of your project? It also could be the case that your project hands off this responsibility to some other entity, some other organization, or follow-on project. Be mindful in this closure activity of the potential for scope creep at this late stage by doing extensive transition activities when they were not included and budgeted for in your project. It is important to not let this happen. Make use of the processes that are already set up in your work environment. Most healthcare organizations have a change control process set up for these types of situations. Be sure to find out and adhere to these processes. Community physicians' offices and single practice offices may not have a process set up. For these, you will have to set up the process yourself. Be sure to include this step in your planning. Be mindful that the process that you set up will need to fit into the work environment. Requiring many people to review a change to the system in a small office will not work. Review your plan with the people who are going to do the process. Listen to their suggestions and incorporate them into your plan. As far as the project closure activities, you will want to review prior phases and prior activities and deliverables. Basically, take stock of where you are in the project. If you are in the final phases, what is left to do? Are there any outstanding issues? You want to identify all ongoing activities. Are they on track to complete on time and within budget? Are there any outstanding issues in some of these phases and activities going on right now? Identify deliverables still outstanding. Are they on schedule to be completed on time? What deliverables have not yet been produced? This is the time to plan your end game so there are no loose ends and bring in your project to a success. It is important to organize your project closing activities. The project management plan should include the tasks required for project closeout. 
However, as you take stock of the project status near the end of the project, you may want to prepare your own action list of tasks that encompasses all that must be done to bring the project to a successful close. Based on your identification of ongoing activities and outstanding deliverables, apply extra management attention now so they are all completed on time and within budget. This is the time to assess the risks to successful completion of the project and take steps to monitor and manage those risks and mitigate them. Organizing your project management effort in this way may help you to successfully navigate the end game in your project and will provide for a smooth transition for operations. In the community physician's office, this organizing effort will help the staff to understand that they will be taking over the system when you are gone and help them in visualizing themselves as operators of the system. An important activity to focus attention on during closeout is to identify ongoing procurements and close them off successfully. These procurements and contracts require special attention at the end of a project. You want to make sure, for example, have the vendors been paid? Has the contracted work been performed? Have the materials and products from vendors and suppliers really been received? Are there open claims or disputes? Can additional effort be expended so they can be resolved within the time frame of your project? Some contracts will specify dispute resolution processes, so there is a place for you to go if any of these types of processes are needed. Most often in the case of procurement and contracts, there will be an organizational entity for you to go to for help, such as the legal office, to provide some advice and counsel for procurements and contracts. Another important activity is to include the customer acceptance process. In this project closeout, you will reap the benefits of having established very clear criteria in the past for how you are going to complete your project, documented in the project charter, which is signed by the customer. So if you have been effectively managing scope throughout the project, your customer will have the same idea as you do of what constitutes a completed project and its deliverables, so there will be no surprises. This is not the time for last-minute scope creep or surprises. In health IT systems, the project charter may have specified the use of an acceptance testing process. Typically, a customer team that works closely with your project team will be the ones to identify a set of acceptance tests, and these tests must be in accordance with the requirements for the health IT system. The team will also define what it means for the tests to be passed. Satisfactory execution of the acceptance test process will be an important determinant of the customer's acceptance that the project has really been completed successfully. Examples of healthcare acceptance processes could be as simple as showing that computerized provider order entry, CPOE orders, are received in the respective ancillary departments, to as complex as simulating the admission of a patient through dropping a bill for that patient. As part of the customer acceptance process, focus attention now on a customer acceptance document. Your project may call for a formal document that marks the acknowledgement by the customer that the project is completed satisfactorily and the project deliverables are acceptable. The use of a formal document would have been specified in the project charter or in a contract, and having such a signed acceptance by the customer can be very helpful to you and your organization in case there are any questions later on about whether the project satisfied the customer. This acceptance document may include an optional section in which the customer may offer comments, typically complimenting the project team on how well it did. A further option with a customer acceptance document activity is to invite the customer to make suggestions of ways in which future projects could be improved, all of this in the spirit of continuous improvement. But generally, a preferred arrangement is to have these optional elements, such as any comments from the customer or any customer suggestions for improvement, as part of a separate document from the formal acceptance document. Be sure that the appropriate person signs the acceptance documentation. In the community physician's office, this person could be the physician or the office manager you have been working with. In a large academic institution, the person may be the chief financial officer or the chief medical information officer. The identification of this person early in the process is critical. 
If someone other than the identified person signs the acceptance document, be sure to have it documented as to why there was a change. There should also be a final project presentation to the customer. Your interactions with the customer will determine if a final project presentation is required. This can be a way to bring a formal and public closure to the project. This also is an excellent opportunity to invite stakeholders to get a summary of how the project went. The presentation can also support a celebratory role for the project team and the customer to share in the success of the project in a public setting. The final presentation also serves to help the customer in viewing the system as his. At this point, the turnover process has started. You may remain around for some time to answer questions or for training, but the system has been turned over to the customer. Why document the project at all? Documentation is not often the most glamorous task, but it is very important to record what happened on your project. At the start of the project, you were encouraged to refer to prior projects for examples, such as looking at prior project management plans, project charters, and work breakdown structures. The only reason these documents were available is because previous project managers took the time to maintain these documents. Now it is your turn. Your project should contribute to the repository of project documents to help educate project managers in the future. The documents provide a role in providing an important historical reference for the organization. It is a very comprehensive report and serving a role as an educational and training resource for future projects and project managers. Documentation of the project is very important to do. The decisions, reasons, and thought processes underlying how the system was built will guide the changes to the system in the future. Passing on this historical context is a necessary part of project closure. Let's look more closely at this final project report to document your project and what the sample contents of it might be. It is really intended to be a single source, an excellent single source of information on the project. It is tempting to think that you and the team members will remember what happened on the project, what worked and what didn't and why, but in reality it is really unlikely that you will recall it all. Capturing all this information in one place is really valuable to the organization and to future project managers. Much of the information will be available from existing documents, such as the project management plan, the project charter, and your project schedule and budget. So, preparing the report, while the information and experiences are really fresh in your mind, may not be as daunting a task as it first appears. The final report is a good opportunity for you, as the PM, to reflect on the overall experience by assessing how the project unfolded over time and including hints for future project managers based on your experiences. Look at templates for final reports. They may be in your organization assets. Or you can look at examples that are in reference documents, such as the book by Cynthia Stackpole, a project manager's book of forms, a companion to the project management body of knowledge. Using this template for multiple projects in your organization can make it easier to locate relevant information. Whether your company has a template that you will be using or you will create one for the customer, be sure to ask what the customer needed for a final project report. This is another way to keep the customer involved with the project until the end, and it helps the customer to start thinking of the project as drawing to a close. The project documentation serves a role in organizational learning. It contributes to the training of future project managers. This is one of the prime purposes of project documentation. As information is captured in the project final report, it will serve as a reference. For example, how did the template for a stakeholder register work out in practice? Was the right information captured in the register? Would you suggest capturing different information? What were experiences using new technology? For example, did you experiment with new ways of communicating with your team? Be aware of all the opportunities now with social network media and so forth. There are many more opportunities than there have been in the past. If you tried some of these, how did they work out? 
Of particular help for training purposes are your personal experiences and observations on how you dealt with challenges posed by the project. What did you do? How did it work out? How would you recommend handling these same kinds of issues in the future? All of these can go a long way in providing an important reference for organizational learning for future project managers. Another important purpose of documentation is to capture your lessons learned. Consider the audience for these lessons learned, usually future project managers and project teams. What worked well and why? What did not work and why do you think that was the case? What would you do differently? Very often, your lessons learned can be added to an ongoing database in your organization. By having it in an automated form, it can be searchable by future project managers who want to look into particular issues or particular aspects of project management. This is the time to record elements in a lessons learned document that you wish you had known before starting your project. It can also be a time to cite specific examples to make it more real about what worked and what did not. What were the surrounding issues that affected the results? Adding these lessons learned to an outline database for your organization can really make an important contribution for future projects. There are suggestions for how to capture lessons learned. One suggestion is not to wait until the end of the project. Capture lessons learned at project milestones, when stages or phases are completed or deliverables are produced. You can always review them later to see if early comments are still valid. While the experiences are still fresh in your mind, this is the time to capture them because history shows we often don't learn from the lessons of others, so we really want to make sure we retain things in as fresh a format as possible. Consider drafting a document with your team members' input. Remember, they have a lot of experiences, so it is important to capture this expertise. Think about conducting several meetings at different milestones in the project. Another opportunity is for you to collect information on audio file so future project managers can listen to it. If you do this, keep your audio files short. Break it into small segments focusing on certain experiences during a project. For example, how you dealt with challenging or difficult customers, how you handled budget cuts, and so on. Think about different alternatives to make capturing lessons learned a useful and reasonable part of the project activities. Be sure to add these activities to your project plan so that you will not forget them. Managing transition to operations is a key activity as you near the end of the project. Remember that for your project to have beneficial effects for users, customers, and organizations, the products of your project must get into practice. The challenge is to get them integrated into the operational environment. Often these are very critical healthcare settings that require special attention, so collaboration with the operational managers is essential. Your project may have resulted in just outstanding products, new systems, and new services that will improve the healthcare operations, make them more effective and efficient, but they need to get implemented. As you deal with the ongoing operational environment, you can't simply wing it or handle it informally when it comes to making changes to that environment. This is a very critical operating, operational environment, and all the introduction of new systems or workflows or processes must be carefully planned and executed. They all require close collaboration with the operational manager and staff that will be affected by the changes. An example from the world of IT may illustrate the importance of ensuring a smooth transition. A cutover to a new IT system at the time of year when it receives huge orders for Halloween candy. These orders represent a big percentage of its revenue for the entire year. The new IT system could not accept orders for candy, and this caused delays and disruption, and ultimately, a lot of lost business and a badly tarnished reputation. Unfortunately, there are examples like this in which new IT systems that had the promise of much improvement in terms of services and efficiency were never realized or much delayed because the transition was not really carefully thought out and handled well with the operational environment. 
The healthcare arena is littered with projects that have been built and then failed to be implemented because the transition into practice was not done in such a way that the resulting system was interwoven into the workflow of the providers or institutions. Moving from written orders to computer-based ordering is more than populating the system with the correct orderable item. The workflow of the providers needs to be taken into account and accommodated for when building the system. This concludes Lecture A of Project Closures and Transitions. In summary, we learned how to wrap up project activities, finish the customer acceptance process, document and archive lessons learned, update and close out project documents, and manage the transition to operations.